So you just got your Legion Go and you've unboxed your device, you've gone through the Windows setup screens, and maybe you even upgraded your SSD. Or maybe you want to, check out my video if you missed it. And now you're wondering what to do next. Today's guide is going to be beginner friendly. I'm going to take you through setting up your device and updating it, doing some initial tests to make sure that your device is working correctly, some optimization and nice to have software. I'll show you how to adjust your VRAM. And finally, I'll show you where to get the best deals on games so you can make your library way bigger than you can ever play through. And now that we know where we're going, let's dive into it. Before we get started with the device inspection, I wanted to show you guys one thing. So a lot of people have been talking about their trackpad not being sensitive. Well, it turns out there's actually a film that covers it. On mine, it looks super obvious here because I had already lifted the corner, but honestly, I didn't notice that it had one until I saw somebody else mention it. So just make sure to remove it if you're having any sensitivity issues with your trackpad. Okay, let's move on to the physical inspection. Whenever I get a new device, I do like to give it a quick physical overview just to make sure that nothing's broken because it does happen. First we'll start with the kickstand, just make sure that you get the full range of motion and that it's not loose and as you can see here, mine is perfectly fine. Next we'll make sure that the controllers click on and off smoothly, so we're going to press the buttons at the back and then apply pressure downwards. So I like to put my thumb at the bottom, middle finger at the top and then just press down. And you should hear a click and then be able to pull it straight out. So let's test that on the other side now. The first time that you're doing this, it's going to feel like you're applying too much pressure, but it does actually take quite a bit to unclick it. When you're putting them back on, make sure that you have it lined up straight because otherwise it's not going to slide up properly and you might end up damaging it. So you can see that if it's kind of at an angle here, it won't go in. So just make sure that you have it fully lined up. Once you have it lined up well, it clicks right in. And now the next thing that we want to test is actually to make sure that all of the buttons are working correctly. To do this, we're going to go to gamepadtester.com and test out the controllers. You can press any button to activate it, and then we can run through all the buttons just to make sure that they actually work. And as you can see, all of my buttons are working. The triggers do feel a little bit weird though. At about 70% press, they are activating at 100% already. So maybe in the future, they'll add a calibration tool for that, and then I can fix that. And once you finish going through all of the physical buttons, we can actually test out the joystick circularity. To do that, you just need to check the test circularity box and then spin the joysticks a few times, you should expect about a 2% error. If you're getting more than that, then there may be something wrong with your joysticks, or if you're only getting one direction, then clearly there's something wrong with your joysticks and you should probably return to the store. And then the last thing that you want to test for the controllers is to actually detach them and make sure that they're still recognized, so let's go ahead and take them off. So now that I have them off, we can test it out and you can see that the controller is still working perfectly fine so we have no issues with our device, we can move on to some software updates. First we'll start off with our Windows updates, I do like to do those first just to make sure that if something breaks I can fix it right away. So we're going to check for updates by going to settings and then Windows update. Unfortunately this isn't the exact screen recording of when I first got the device because that clip messed up so I'm just pulling a fresh one here. But you'll probably see a number of updates so go ahead and click download and install. Once it's done downloading and installing you can go ahead and reboot your system. And now your Windows is up to date, congratulations! So your reward is a broken AMD driver so the app won't work. Thankfully we're going to fix that by updating to the latest AMD driver. To do that, we're going to open up our browser and do a search. You can also check the video description if you want to grab the link from there, but we're just going to search for Legion Go AMD drivers. And then we're going to click on the first link here to head over to Lenovo's support site where we can download the drivers. You can see that the drivers are listed as November 6th, so these are the most up to date that we can get. At least if you're looking for the official drivers. You can do other methods to force the 7840 drivers, but we're not going to cover that today. So we're going to click on the download link to get it to download and it should pop up in the top right corner here. And once it's finished downloading, we can head to our downloads folder and go ahead and run the file. Once you open it up, it'll take about 30 seconds or so to open up and then you'll get a pop up. Just click on yes. Then you can just select your language, click accept and then next and then press next again to install and then press next one last time. Once that finishes, command prompt will open and quickly run and then you're good to go. So press OK and then press finish. Now we can check our AMD drivers again to see if it's working and now the app opens up so it looks like it's fixed. And now you can see that we're on 23.9.2. But we'll go more in depth on the AMD app in a little bit. Now you can just reboot your system and you should be good to go. Before we get started with installs, we'll do a little bit of cleaning up. So right click on your taskbar and let's just make this a little bit more organized. I like to turn off the task view, the widgets and the chat icon. 
you're probably not going to use these either, so you may as well get rid of them so they're not just sitting there cluttering it up. The next thing I like to do is to clean up the start bar. There's a ton of apps that you really don't need here, so let's go ahead and uninstall some of them, like LinkedIn. And then you could just go through these and remove what you don't want. So you don't have to uninstall. You can actually just unpin from the start bar if it's something you're not going to access. Like, I'm not going to be using a to-do list while I'm gaming, so may as well get rid of that. And once you've gotten rid of most of these, you're going to have a much cleaner start bar and you can actually pin some things that you actually plan to use, like maybe your game stores or certain files that you plan to access regularly. Our next step should help slightly for performance or at least for memory usage. So we're going to go to our startup apps and we're going to turn off a few things. It may vary for you, but I'm going to turn off OneDrive and I'm also going to turn off Teams because I don't plan to use those. I'm actually just going to use this for a gaming device. It's not going to make a massive difference, but every little bit helps, so definitely turn these off if you don't plan to use them. These next two optimizations should actually give us some gains here. So first we're going to search for Windows Features, and then you want to click on Turn Off Windows Features. So we're going to go here and we're going to scroll down until we see Virtual Machine Platform, and we're going to uncheck the box and press OK. It's going to search for files for a little bit, and then once it's found them, it's going to recommend that you reboot, but we're not going to do that right now. We're going to do that after we do the second optimization. For this second optimization, we're going to search for core isolation, and then we just need to click on the results here. And what we need to do is we need to toggle off one setting that's called memory integrity. So just turn that off, and then it's going to prompt you to reboot in the bottom right corner, but this time we're going to go ahead and reset. I didn't get a chance to test on versus off in the Legion Go, but I did do that for the ROG Ally. And if you check out my video on the One X Fly versus the ROG Ally, there is a section in there called Bonus Performance Test. So definitely check that one out if you want to see the difference. It was pretty substantial, actually. So just to summarize, you want to turn off memory integrity as well as virtual machine platform. This next optimization is actually from the Fox's video where he compared some of the power profiles. So check out that video if you want more of the information and to see some of the charting. But I'll quickly show you how to set that up. To adjust these settings, we're going to open up Legion Space by pressing the left Legion button. Now you can click on Settings and then we're going to go to the Performance tab on the left. And you want to make sure to have the OS power mode set to Efficiency. This is the one that's going to net you the best performance as well as the best efficiency. And the thermal mode is really depending on what kind of game you're playing and how much TDP you want to use. So if we click on custom, you can see that custom is kind of broken right now. I have it set at 30 watts, but it's not actually on the side. But now that I move it, it goes there. It also behaves differently when it's plugged in versus when it's unplugged. Until that gets fixed, I would recommend using the performance tab if you're looking for the highest performance in a game, if you're plugged in or not worried about battery life. And hopefully that'll be fixed in an upcoming update. Our next optimization is adjusting the VRAM from BIOS. So shut down your device and then when you boot it up, make sure you press the volume up button rapidly and you'll be greeted with this menu as you're booting up. And one of the options here is to enter the BIOS setup. So this is a touchscreen menu. So just tap on enter BIOS and you'll be in the menu here. Now press more settings in the bottom right corner. And then you'll see that there's a number of different tabs and a bunch of information here. So we want to go onto the configure tab on the side. And then you want to scroll down until you see UMA frame buffer, tap on that, and then you can adjust it to either 3, 4, or 8 gigabytes of VRAM. There'll be more options coming in the future. There's actually a beta BIOS out in the wild right now that you can get 6 gigabytes, but I'm not going to show that today because it's a little bit outside of this video's purpose and likely won't be relevant for super long. But until we get an official BIOS, I recommend setting it to 4 gigabytes. And then to exit, you can click on the exit tab and then click exit saving changes. Your device will reboot and this will take a little longer than expected and then you'll be good to go with your four gigabytes of VRAM. We'll open up the AMD app to confirm that now. When we open up the AMD app we can just go to the settings icon in the top right corner and then we're going to click on system and you can see now that we have four gigabytes of VRAM set aside. Previously this was shown as three. While we're in the AMD app, I'll show you a few things. So there's this global graphics setting where you can put on Hyper RX, you can put quality, power savings, default. Here you can adjust the RSR and a few other features. 
probably in the near future, we should be seeing an update that allows us to do frame insertion. I can't remember the name of it, but it's very helpful for performance and it's coming soon. So keep an eye on this. This next part of the AMD app, you should never touch. Don't even look at it. Don't even speak its name. Don't go to memory optimizer and adjust anything. You will mess up your VRAM and it's very difficult to fix at times. Some have fixed it after by unplugging the battery. Some have had to flash the BIOS and some have had trouble even after flashing the BIOS. So do not touch that. Now we're gonna move on to some helpful software. So the first one is gonna to be to help out these speakers that are very quiet. So we're gonna get FX sounds. You just need to Google search it. And then we're gonna click on the first link here. Then you just need to click on download for Windows. And then once it's downloaded, you need to run the .exe file. It'll pop up a window and start to install the program. And once it's done, you'll be greeted with the FX sound menu. So here you can choose different audio effects. So you can choose, for example, music, volume boost, gaming, whatever you'd like. And then once you've chosen one, you can select the source. So right now I have my Nreal Airs plugged in. So that's what you're seeing, but that's pretty much it. When you close it, it's going to minimize to the taskbar tray. So you can always go in there and edit the settings or pull up the menu from there. Another alternative instead of FX sound that I actually prefer is Dolby Access. So you can just go to the Microsoft store and search Dolby Access and then click on the blue icon to pull up the app. So the app costs, I think it was about $10 or $15. It's been a while since I've purchased. It's a fairly cost effective way to boost your speakers. So you can try this one, or if you don't want to spend the $10, then I'd recommend trying out FX sound and see how you like it. Some users mentioned that they were experiencing some audio latency. Now I haven't personally experienced that. So just keep that in mind that that may potentially happen as it has happened for some people. If you're going to use Dolby Access, right now you can see that my settings are visible, but they won't normally be. So you need to actually go to your sound menu and activate it. And to do that, it's very easy. Just click on more volume settings and then click on the speaker that you're using. So in my case, I'm gonna click on Realtek Audio and then scroll down to Spatial Sound and make sure that you have it on Dolby Atmos. That won't be the default. One other thing to note is that you can't run FX Sound and Dolby Access at the same time. You'll need to uninstall or at the very least close FX Sound from the taskbar tray to make sure that it isn't running. So give these a try and let me know in the comments if they helped you. The next helpful software is called Battery Bar and this is a floating battery so you can always see your battery percentage even while you're playing a game. To get this, we're gonna search battery bar and click on the first link. And then we scroll down and we're gonna try the basic version. We don't need pro. Once it finishes downloading, let's head over to our downloads folder and click on the .exe to run it. While going through the install prompts, there is one toggle that you wanna make sure is selected. And that's the second one here, the battery floating toolbar. Once that's selected, go ahead and finish the install. And then what we're gonna do is you can either reboot your system to have it pop up, or you can go ahead and find the .exe. So we're gonna do that. Head over to C, Program Files, Battery Bar, and then launch the Battery Bar .exe file. Now you'll see a floating battery pop up in the top left corner and you can move it around. You can see that it shows your battery percentage or time remaining to charge to full. If you hover over, you'll also get more stats. And the nice thing about this battery is it always stays at the top layer. So if you put it over top of a window, it'll always be there. So we can open up a number of windows and it'll always remain at the top. I like to put it in the top right corner. That way I always see my battery percentage and I don't have the device die on me when I haven't saved my game yet. It's happened to me too many times. And the last piece of software that I'll show you is actually called 7-Zip. So this is for zipping and unzipping files, something that you often need to do when you're installing. It's easy to get, you just need to Google search, click on the download icon, and then click download for the 64-bit. Then all you have to do is run the .exe and it'll install in a couple of seconds. And then to use it, it's very simple. You need to highlight a couple files, click show more options, and then you go to 7-zip, and here we can compress these files, which now you can see is in this zip folder called downloads. And then to unzip something, you just do the same thing, go to more options, and then click 7-zip then select where you'd like to unzip to and that's pretty much it then you have access to your zip folder and my final tip for this video is deals.gg so this is a great place to get all the sales and discounts you could find the free game summarized here if you take a look they have three different categories they have new deals best deals and historical lows you can also expand these to see the full section and you can see that the best deals usually has the free games as well as historical lows and the sources for these sales are from all of the major stores. So you got Steam, Epic, GOG Galaxy, you have uh, a few others, Microsoft Store. And if I click on one of the games, you can see that there's different options. So let's check out the Steam one because it's 50% off. Click shop now and it basically just links you to the store and to that product page. 
So I definitely recommend checking this out regularly. You can pin it to your browser and get quick access. It's great to see that you can find any of the sales. You can also go down and look at some of the bundles or different news, so check it out. I found it's usually the best way to get games because I can get them cheaper than I normally would. And that's gonna wrap it up for my tips. It went a little bit longer than I anticipated, but hopefully at least one of these tips are relevant to you and you find it helpful. If it was helpful, please consider leaving me a like, maybe subscribe to the channel if you're looking for more content like this. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.